I love growing mint in my garden. It's a beautiful plant. It just smells heavenly when you brush against it. And I use it in a lot of ways to take advantage of the fresh leaves. But I also preserve it. Join me today as I show you how I make mint jelly. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I use mint in a number of different ways. I love to have a nice cold beverage made with the fresh mint leaves. I'll dry the leaves so that I can make mint tea. I'll do a chiffonade of the leaves to put them in a salad. It adds a really nice punch. And of course, I use it in recipes for different types of cooking. But when it comes to making mint jelly, that's a way to get the wonderful flavor of mint all year round. It begins with the mint harvest. And I'll go ahead and cut out a number of the mint stalks. The stems will regrow. So as you're cutting them, don't worry about taking too many out. One of the reasons mint is so invasive is because it grows so quickly. And I use this as an opportunity to prune out some of these plants in a bed that's beginning to get a little overgrown. And so with a big bundle of mint leaves harvested, let's go in the house and make some jelly. I've washed all this mint quite well not because I spray my plants, but just to clean off any dust or insects or bird poop that might be on them. I want a nice clean product when it's time to make my jelly. For some of these, the lower leaves are yellowed. That's because when they were growing in that bed, these bottom leaves weren't getting any sunlight. They turn yellow, perfectly normal. So what I'll do is only harvest the nice bright green leaves. Those are the ones that are packed with flavor. I'm pulling off the individual leaves, but when I get to the top of the plant, just to speed things up a little bit, it's okay to just pull off the top, all those leaves and add it to my container of fresh mint. It always smells so good to work with fresh mint leaves. Now, that big stock that I harvested gave me a little more than a cup and a half of packed mint leaves. And that's perfect because the recipe that I'm using from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving calls for one and a half cups of compacted mint leaves. Now, I love this book. I've made dozens of recipes, and when you make any jelly or jam, you should use an approved recipe to make it. Now, I could just put this in water, and the recipe is simply to put the leaves with water. We'll add some lemon juice, some sugar, and some liquid pectin, and we'll have mint jelly. But to get the maximum amount of flavor. I'm just going to do a coarse chop of these leaves that will increase the surface area and help release more of the oils, which is what's going to give us the delicious flavor. I have two and a quarter cups of water all ready to go. Now I'm going to combine the mint leaves and the water. And then over a medium-high heat, I'm going to bring this to a boil. With the water and the leaves boiling now, I'll go ahead and cover the pot, turn the heat off, and let the leaves steep for at least 10 minutes. I went ahead and put everything together that I need to make the jelly before I put the leaves in the water. But while it's steeping, 
now's a good opportunity to recheck and make sure that I have everything I need so that once I start the jelly making process, there's no delays. This recipe is for four eight ounce jars. So I have four bands for the top, have my jar lifter, and I have my magnetic lid lifter. I have four clean eight ounce jars already warming up in a big canning pot of water. I have the four lids in another small pot of hot water. And I have my lemon juice, three and a half cups of granulated sugar, and one package of liquid pectin. It smells very minty in here. Now, what I've done is to take a jelly bag and put it over a bowl. You could also do this with cheesecloth. And now we're going to pour the liquid through the cloth into the bowl. And it's okay if some of the leaves get into the cloth bag. We just want all of the liquid to drain through. And so now I need one and three quarters cups of this mint liquid. And it's almost perfect. A little bit extra. And there we have it. Let's start making jelly. So in a heavy saucepan, we'll put one and three quarters cups of the mint liquid, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Stir this a little bit. And then adding three and a half cups of the granulated sugar. I'll go ahead and turn the heat on. And we want to stir this until the sugar is completely dissolved and then we're heating it to a boil. I'm turning up the heat to high. I don't like it to be high, high, so closer to medium high. And you'll stir the entire time. Now, here's where using liquid pectin differs from using a powdered pectin. If we were making this jelly with powdered pectin, we would be adding that right now and then bringing it up to a boil. But with the liquid pectin, we heat it to boiling and then we'll add the liquid pectin and boil it for one more minute and then it'll be ready to put into the jars. We're looking for a full rolling boil that can't be stirred down. And when we get to that point, we'll go ahead and put the liquid pectin in. It'll cool things down momentarily. And we want it to return to a full rolling boil again. After a full minute of the rolling boil, Go ahead and turn the heat off and remove it from the heat. It can set up pretty quickly, so right away I'll grab a jar, pour out all the hot water, and then begin filling the hot jars. So I just take my spoon, I've used this spoon for years because it makes it easy to pour and I'll pour it into the jar. Now, I haven't added any green food coloring, but if you really want a bright green mint jelly, you can add food coloring to get that effect. 
I like the natural look without any artificial colors added. Now I'm filling it to the top ring about a quarter inch from the edge. I have a moistened paper towel. I rub it so that it's completely clean. And then I take one of my warm lids, put it on, finger tighten the band, and put this back in the hot water. So I'll do it again with another jar, pouring out the water, putting it on a clean towel, ladling the jelly into the jar. And the more you do this, of course, the easier it becomes. And I've made hundreds of jars of jam and jelly over the years, so it goes pretty quickly for me. Filling it up to quarter inch below the top. Cleaning off the edge. Getting a lid and a band. And moving on to the final two jars. With all four jars in the pot, now I'll cover it and wait for it to come to a full rolling boil. And now comes one of my favorite moments when making jelly and jam. The measurements were almost exact. There's very little left behind. But there's enough for a taste. And it's already starting to gel, which is awesome. Tastes like mint jelly. I'll take a spoon and scrape up some of the thicker gel at the bottom and off of this spoon. It's good. It's not as strong as the mint jelly that you'll get at the store. And of course, it doesn't have the bright green fake food coloring that you would get at the store. It has a nice, subtle, mint flavor with some really good sweetness. I could eat this all day long. Now we're looking for that pot to reach that full boil. This is what we're looking for, a full rolling boil. We'll keep the lid on for the processing, but now we can start our timer. The processing time for this jelly is 10 minutes at that full boil, but you do need to make altitude adjustments. I live at 7,000 feet elevation. I need to process my jelly longer than that basic 10 minutes. The book tells you all of that. I add 15 minutes of processing time for all of the high acid foods that I'm water bath canning, like jelly. So my timer, set for 25 minutes. I can adjust the heat. If it starts boiling over, we don't want all that water to be on the stove. I started with about an inch and a half of water above the top of the jars. If it starts boiling that much, I'll turn the heat down a little bit to maintain the boil, but not so much that it's boiling over. Okay, now it's time to turn the heat off. I'm going to let it settle because it was boiling. There's a lot of steam built up and I want to let things relax a little bit in the water. And then when I take the lid off, I want to open it away from me so that any of that steam goes that way and not into my face. Using the jar lifter again, I'll lift straight up. I'm not worried about draining any of the water off right now. It'll automatically drain. I don't want to tip the jars at this point because that could 
affect the seal. And I'm just going to place them on the back of this dry cloth. And if you hear a pop, that's actually a good sign that the jars have sealed. And so now I'm going to keep them in this out of the way spot where they won't be disturbed and just let them sit overnight. It's been 24 hours and now it's time to check on the seal of the jars. Now, the band should come off very easily. What I'm looking for is a slight indentation. The lid should be concave. If you push on the center and it pops back, that means it doesn't have a good seal. If you can see that it's concave or feel it, you've got a good seal. And I've got a good seal on all of these jars. Now, if you do everything right, you're going to get a good seal. I can't remember the last time I didn't have a jar of jelly or jam seal properly. It's all in the process. Follow the right process and you get good jars. I'll also give it a little bit of a tip at this point just to see how the gel is going. Sometimes, particularly with the liquid pectin, it takes a little bit longer to set up. So I'm not making a big turn. I'm just making sure that it's gelling, and it is. And then a very important thing to do is label the jars so you know what it is and you know when you processed it. And so with all of my jars labeled, I'm just going to set them on a shelf in my pantry and wait because most of the jam and jelly I make is for holiday gifts. That's one reason why I use the fancy jelly jars. When I make it for just myself, I do the plain jars. Now you can eat this jelly right away. It saves on the shelf for many, many months. In fact, I've had jars of jelly that I've eaten well after 12 months, even up to 24 months with no problem. It's all about the seal. Now, I did clean the jar ahead of time, and this kind of jelly isn't the type that will seep out during processing. But if you detect any stickiness around the side, you can definitely clean off the jars. As long as you've got the good seal, it doesn't matter if any of the jelly has rolled out over the side. Don't pluck at it. Don't try to figure out that the seal is good by prying up a lip. It's all about the design of these lids and that concave surface tells you everything is good. I have other harvests that I need to preserve right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get to that. And if you want to see how I do some of my preserving, watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening and preserving.